along with other activists, various organizations are here. Lady Bloomer has taken a number of arrests for various causes. He, along with Frank and Darrell, live in Catholic worker houses. Uh, Sunday I took a bunch of food over there that was left over from the mosque. So uh, that fed a few people, or will be if it hasn't been used yet, because it was frozen. Thank you. 
some singing for us uh, and uh, I, my name is Frank Cordero if you don't already know that I'm the other guy that got arrested along with uh, where's he at Rick yes. still is there mm -hmm. Rick Rick Rick, us. Rick. yes yeah, he's over here uh, and uh, Sharon Delman yeah, yet to get arrested but very close to getting arrested every year uh, has a poem that she'd like to share as the opening uh, uh, remarks at this this liturgy seemed just like the perfect thing. It's only four lines long, and it seemed like a very appropriate poem to read to start off the evening. It was written by Ella Whaler Wilcox, and it's a poem called Protest, published in 1914. Very re relevant today. It says, to sin by silence when we should protest makes cowards of men. The human race has climbed on protest. Had no voice been raised against injustice, ignorance, and lust, the Inquisition yet would serve the law and guillotines decide our least disputes. The few who did must speak and speak again to right the wrongs of many. And those are our two speakers tonight. I thank them very much for doing what they've done. Thank you. Uh, we're very fortunate to have uh, a singer here amongst us, uh, Purusha. I hope I'm saying that poorly. Close. Uh, uh, is a, a vocalist, and she's going to share a couple of songs. We've got kind of. We kind of got the music. Kind of got the technology down, but not. Well, we're among friends. I think we'll be okay. <laughs> I couldn't think of uh, two nicer songs to sing to show our love and imagination for the planet to be imagined by John Lennon, of course, and what a wonderful world. Uh, you know, any of these, either of these, I should say, please join and be a, a beautiful chorus behind me or in front of me. <laughs>
to talk about uh, uh, the uh, problem with the uh, World Food Prize, which most people don't even want to understand there's a problem. Uh, so, uh, uh, and I'm, I'm warming up for Reverend Billy, and as a warm up for him, I, I'm going into the Old Testament. Uh, and uh, the text I think that uh, really, uh, really speaks well about what the World Food Prize is all about, its collusion with corporate ag, and uh, my generation of baby boomer Iowans, uh, and older, there's plenty of them out here right now, because this is our story, gang. Uh, and it's, uh, it comes from Genesis, it's the 44th cha uh, 47th chapter, and it's uh, called uh, uh, Joseph's Land Policy. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's there right at the end of the book, and man, it's 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 extraordinary. Now you know who Joseph is. He's that uh, guy at the uh, uh, end of the line of the patriarchs. You got Abraham, you got Isaac, you got Jacob, <laughs> then you got the twelve sons. You want to read about families that got problems? These guys really weren't the nicest people to each other. Joseph out of jealousy, was sold into slavery to Egypt. You know, that, that's how the brothers treated each other. Uh, and uh, uh, Joseph is our story. Because uh, Joseph is the guy that used his God-given gifts. Can't blame him, he was in jail. I'd grab at anything to get out of jail. His God-given gifts of interpreting dreams. And when the Pharaoh found out about it, got this Hebrew slave prisoner and said, help me with this dream. You remember the dream where you've got these, these seven uh, fat cows coming down the river. And then, then he has seven lean, starving skeleton cows. And, uh, uh, and uh, he asked the Jewish kid with his God-giving gifts, tell me, what does this mean? And he gave the Pharaoh what he got his interpretive skills. And he said, well, that means uh, uh, you're gonna have seven good years. Uh, uh, and after those seven good years, it's gonna be seven bad years of famine. And of course the Pharaoh said, oh my God, what should I do, what should I do? And he said, he said, who's smarter than Joseph, this kid from Israel? So he made him the head steward of everything, everything. And now, listen to the policy on which the uh, people were able to be fed. But what happened to them in the process? Uh, and it uh, begins with uh, verse 13 out of 47. He says, uh, since there was no food, the lands of Egypt and the Canines uh, uh, were languishing, uh, Joseph gathered in payment for the rations. Uh, all of the money uh, in Egypt and Canaan was taken from the people. That was one year. Uh, and then the next year, uh, since our money is gone, uh, Joseph, has, Joseph replied, well, give me your livestock. <laughs> Does this sound familiar? Two bad years. So the livestock is gone. Come the third and the fourth years, uh, with our money spent and our livestock uh, made over by the Lord, there is nothing left to put at our Lord's disposal except our bodies in our farmland. <laughs> uh, take us willingly, the, the, the starving people said, take us uh, uh, yeah, take, take us and our land in exchange for food. We'll become Pharaoh's 